Good morning, everybody. Has anybody ever read those Choose Your Own Adventure books when you're little? And they got these stories, and you're reading through them, and you get to read a passage, and then you get a multiple choice, and then you flip to the page where you, you get to choose which way you go. You turn a few pages and see, how did that play out? I love those books. Those are awesome. Now, today, I can't do multiple endings, or multiple you know, versions pass through here, but I am going to present a choice. The choice is to do what is right, what is wrong, or do we do nothing? Now let's try an experiment. Let's take a look at the scenario and see what the correct choice is. Now remember, the options are right, wrong, or nothing. Real simple, right? Scenario one. There's this guy, and this dude's a sociopath. He enjoys getting people under skin. He knows how to push a person's button, get them angry, get them distracted, and then manipulate them into getting exactly what he wants them to do. Make them look like they're wrong in front of somebody else and picking on them. You can picture this guy, can't you? I think we all know somebody like this. And this guy singled you out as his next target. He's going to try to get you worked up and angry so he can manipulate you or the situation. And when he starts seeing, trying to kneel you, trying to prod you, trying to get you to react, what should you do? Think on that for a second. Probably, we've all been there before, so it's probably not too hard. What should we do? If you pick nothing, uh, that's actually the right choice in this situation. Don't lose your cool. Don't let him get to you. Don't let him have control of the situation. The less you react, the more it will burn him up and the more it will frustrate him. Doing nothing in this situation is actually right. It's the right thing to do. Also notice, it takes some strength, some self-control to quote, do nothing. No one ever said doing nothing was easy. Okay, so right there, this situation is, is do nothing. Let's try another scenario. Scenario two. As a reminder, the choices are right, wrong, or nothing. Okay, scenario two. There's someone you know and care about. They need some help. They have a problem. And they don't need anything more than someone to listen to them. Someone who cares, who really listens to them, let them get off their chest the things that they've been going through and working through and struggling with. They're going to make it through, but they really need an ear to listen to. What do you do? Well, sitting there with them, restraining yourself from talking and doing nothing but listening is actually a very right thing to do. You know, in both these situations, doing nothing is the right choice. However, that nothing, it's really something, isn't it? There's something going on there. In the first scenario, it took some grit, some self-control, some stamina to resist that guy who was trying to kneel you, trying to manipulate you. In the second, doing nothing, it took some self-control to try not to solve the person's problem, to actually restrain yourself from talking, to just listen and be there in the moment for them. It took alertness, some attentiveness, some compassion to do nothing but listen. In some situations, nothing is the right choice. It is the right thing to do. By doing effectively nothing, we are doing what's right. But, as we mentioned, it really isn't nothingness, is it? It's not the complete lack of action and nothing there. There most definitely was some action to restrain ourselves and listen to a friend. In all situations that we face, we're making choices. There really isn't a third option. It's kind of a trick question I presented to you. Nothing's not an option. We really are choosing between right and wrong every time. Sometimes that right or wrong is what we think of as nothing. But the choice is still always, to, do we do what is right? Do we do what is wrong? Every time, there's no third option. So knowing that, let's do this one more time. You're probably wondering, where is this going? We'll see. Scenario three. There's a group of God's family that wants to grow, spread God's word and God's love. And they're working, but there's only so much they can do. Lots of them have day jobs, may have trouble getting out and about. 
they decided to bring in reinforcements and hire someone to work with them full time, be dedicated to evangelism, teaching, building up the family of God up. When that person shows up and is ready to get to work, what's the right thing to do? Should the group step back, kick back, and let the new guy do it all? No, right? Is doing nothing in this case right? No, not. It's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. We're bringing in reinforcements, someone to help, someone to add to our efforts, someone to add their talents to the pool so we are stronger, better, more capable to serve God through evangelism. Those ideas of reaching the community, having classes out in the community, online, those activities, those campaigns that we've been needing some people power for. Now's the time to double down. Now's the time to get ready and get going. We're bringing in a soul who's on fire who the Lord has been teaching and serving on his own while holding down the day job. We can benefit him by giving him some support. Let him focus on serving the Lord, reaching the community. He can benefit us by providing encouragement, energy, to supplement our efforts and the reach and the share of the love of God. If we take the opportunity and make the most out of it, this small group that worships here can turn to a force for good. We can grow. We can expand to the point where we're changing people's lives in a wider focus than only this small group. Right now, we are a small group. We're here in this big building. As you can see, there's a lot of seats left to fill. Right now, online, we've got a small group. And there's just a massive amount of space you can fill online. We can hold many, many more. God has shown us that his work never stops. Pandemic, fires, floods, politics, all the world can throw at us. God will see us through it, and he has work for us to do. There are so many souls to save. So many, so close to us. We live in one of the biggest cities in California. We have neighbors all around this building, literally right across the street, right next door. We're connected to the internet, and that gives us unlimited reach. God can take a tragedy and make it beautiful, can he? Out of the pandemic, we came out of it stronger. We came out with new tools, a new reach, a whole new way to reach others and show God to them. For example, every month, you know, we've got about eight to nine hours for people watching our YouTube messages. People that, some of them are from folks here, some of them are people that have never known God before. They come across them and watch them. That's a reach we never had before. Some of those persons, you know, they've never heard of God before. They may not know anything about it. And if you're looking for an easy way to introduce somebody, send them to the YouTube channel. There's no friction. There's no pressure. They can check it out on their own time, their own home. And that's a quick and easy way to introduce somebody to God. Hey, here's a message I think you'd like. For someone curious about God, God has given us a chance and a tool to use. Let that person know about him. For another example, we have reached an online audience. We've got a group here in the building. There's more online today. We've got people from all over the country. We've got brother and sister Hogan in Connecticut. We've got my family in Georgia, family in Alabama. And let me tell you, worshiping God with them after so many years, it's a nice feeling. It's been a long time. We've got brother Darius and Demetrius who join us from Texas and Georgia sometimes. We have brother Mike Allop teaching from the Philippines. I was in that Bible class. There is no denying that we are no longer limited by geographic distances. There is no person we cannot reach if we're not willing to try. We can invite and worship God's persons from all of this country, from all over the world. It just takes some work. But the reach that God has supplied to us, there's no excuse for not reaching out. Invite somebody to join us to learn about God. Now, whether you're comfortable with the traditional approach, or talking to somebody in person, or chatting to somebody online, God has made it possible to reach literally anyone we want to and invite them to join us, to experience God's love, to get schooled in who God is, to learn how to start living a life of love with our God. Now, is our goal getting some patooties in the pews here? No, that's not our goal at all. Our goal is to live in God's love and as we do so, show some others how that works, how awesome that is 
to be in God's love. Because that right there is the best selling point you can ever make. We have the greatest gift that's ever been shared with humans. The chance to be loved and to live with the Almighty God and our Creator. The chance to be free from at, at peace with all the, the stuff that this world throws at us. And we know who we truly are. We're truly God's children. We're souls, immortal souls that come from God. To know what we're really born for. To live a life of love that can only come from a life of God. And to sit on gifts like that and to not share them with anybody else, it's not right, is it? When Brother Mike comes here, he's here to help. He's a fellow laborer. He's not here to do all the work. This is not the family of one. It's the family of God. Everyone here has work to do, and there's an opportunity for every single one of us out there. What, whatever your talent may be, however few or however many, we have put them to use to serve God. We're not to sit back and only watch and then forget about God as we leave here every week. God never designed his kingdom as a spectator sport. It's activity. In fact, you can find lots of references to how God designed his kingdom like a vineyard. Fellow laborers going out into it and working in it. Now, we often talk about brothers working and laboring. But sisters, you know those things that you can do that we would be lost without. And let's turn to Acts 9, and let's read about one an example of that. This is a lady who is an incredibly valuable worker for the Lord, who even after her death ended up sharing God's love to many. Now that's an incredible feat. Acts 9, starting in verse 36. Verse 36, it reads, At Zappa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This one was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they washed her, they laid her in the upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter rose and went with them. And when we had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down, and he prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her her hand and lifted her up. And when he called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed on the Lord. And yes, ladies, a lot of times we give Peter the credit for raising her up. But we know that it was Tabitha who did the work of dying and coming back and converted all those people, right? <laughs> that's, that's a feat. Now, I'm not saying we need to do miracles or you got to literally die to serve the Lord. But look at what Tabitha did that made her so valuable. She clothed people. She kept them warm. She showed God's love with the gifts that she knew how to do and she learned how to do. The gifts that God had given her. Now, ladies and fellows, we can all learn from Tabitha, can't we? It doesn't say she had the gift of talking to everybody, the gift of God to be able to go out there and speak to anybody on the street. It doesn't even mention speaking at all. She did this all without words. It mentions her caring for others with the talent that she had, whatever that talent was. By doing what she had learned to do and what she could do, she became so valuable to the group that they were begging God to bring her back. Let her stay around for a little bit longer. They were not ready to part with her. In this world, God's given us so many ways to serve him, hasn't he? There's so many things you can do. No matter what you find your talents are, no matter what you find that you're good at, there's some way you can use it to serve God. It's not a matter of I can't. It's a matter of how. A matter of which way do we pick? What path to choose? Of all that God has given to me, what can I give back by serving Him, using it for Him? And when Mike comes, we get a multiplier. We get somebody to actually reinforce us. We get someone to help with all the work that there is to do out there, all the souls to reach. 
And as long as you remember that God gives us the opportunities to serve him, to show his glory, not to sit back and watch, we will seize this opportunity. We'll make the most of it. God's presenting us something to become better, stronger force for God in this world. Wherever we are, whatever our talents are, we need to work with where we are and what God's placed us with and what's given us to serve him. For all that God does for us, it's only right to give back something to him, right? He's blessed us in a lot of ways. We are God's. All that he is, he could ask for. But all he asks for is whatever we can do. Whatever we're able to. Doing nothing is not an option. You need to remember the choice is always right or wrong. What are we going to do? Let's take a moment. Let's pray. Let's go to God. Let's talk to Him for a moment. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to be able to come and approach you. Peace be with this assembly that is spread out throughout this land, but together in spirit and focused on you. Please give us wisdom. Please give us understanding to know what the right decisions are. And please guide us in making those decisions. Please give us the courage, strength, and the energy to carry out those decisions and that you direct us to. Please let us dedicate ourselves to you and serve you in, in love as you've shown us in your example as Jesus. Please guide us as we come together to welcome Brother Mike, help him to get settled and acclimated and ready to start spreading the good news of your love and salvation and a chance to focus on evangelism. Please let us all remember to do what is right and to dedicate our talents to your service, no matter what they are and what our talents may be. And Father, please let us learn about our gifts. Please let us learn what our talents are and learn what you call us to do and what what you've given us to serve you with, Father. Please show us how to use them for your service. Father, thank you very much for always being there for us for guiding us, for seeing us through whatever comes our way. Thank you for all the opportunities that you give us, Father. Thank you for all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That's pretty much the message for the day. It's very short. It's very simple. We've got an opportunity coming. We've got reinforcements coming. It's an awesome thing to have somebody there. This congregation is one that works. There's people there here that are on fire also. And we got a chance to have that supplemented. And so if we can take this opportunity, we can use it. Make the most out of having Brother Mike come and work with us. We're going to grow. And we're going to serve so much for God. So just remember, whenever you're choosing what to do, it's always right, wrong. There's not a nothing. There's no choice of sitting back. There's no choice of being a spectator. It's all about what do we do. And it's always an action. Today, or any day that you're ready, if you've not been using your talents for God, and you're ready to do so, dedicating your life to God is always a very simple process. There's always water for baptism to God's family. If you'd like to be baptized, if there's anything you need to bring before the congregation, please come forward as we stand and we sing. Thank you.